In this video, I'll demonstrate how I was able to put together a heavy industrial looking barn door kit using nothing more than some readily available off the shelf steel from my local supply yard, a few old nuts and bolts from the local surplus store, four cheap brand new lawnmower pulleys, and some very common power tools that most every household already owns. Check it out. This double barn door kit separates the kids sleeping area from the main living area at our tiny cabin. We didn't want to make the area feel confined and we wanted to be able to open it up when it wasn't being used for sleeping. I put together these doors from some old reclaimed wood. I imagine if you're looking for a hardware kit, you've already got some doors in mind. If not, these could easily be mimicked using some off the shelf 2x material from your local big box. And before we get too far into this project, I'd like to quick run through the material list. I picked up from my local steel yard 6 inch by 8 inch flat bar, a full 20 feet, 1 and a half by 3 16 flat bar, about 6 feet, and 2 inch by half inch flat bar for the rail, and I used about 10 feet of that and a short piece of half inch black pipe just for spacers to space out the rail from the wall. Now I do have a purchasing account with my local supplier and I do buy a fair amount of volume, so this was all very reasonably priced. I cannot, however, speak to what you will pay. Now my local egg supply carries all the nuts and bolts you could possibly imagine. I was able to locate some cool carriage bolts, some square washers, and some really cool looking square nuts. All of these are sold at a per pound price, so I was sure to pick up enough for this project as well as a few to come. Now the same egg supply house sells really cool cast iron pulleys, but I wanted to find something that was commonly available. So I began looking around online and I located some very cool, attractive lawnmower idler pulleys. I also used some muriatic acid to strip the zinc coatings off of some of the hardware as well as the pulleys. Alright, now let's get back to the project. I began by pulling the top and the bottom measurement off of each door and transferring it over to the 6 inch flat bar. Now the theme of this video is to use common hand tools that would occur in a hobby shop or garage. Therefore, I will not be using the plasma cutter or bandsaw, anything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and zip these apart with a cut off disc on the 4 inch angle grinder. Quick tip, uh, I'm not a big fan of abrasive wheel dust. I hate the way it smells, I dislike breathing it in. So I've had very good luck with these Linux cut off discs. Check them out, I'll put a link down in the description. Okay, on to the next step. Now all these planks are held together with dowels through the sides, but I do want to clamp them really, really tight before I put the metal strapping on because that's how I want it to stay, really, really tight. Then what I did was figured out the average width of all the boards and came up with some even spacing. I think I ended up with two nuts per board at about two inches and some change between each one. And holding true to the theme, I'm just using a cordless drill. Hopefully you already own one. Now these are the inch and a half by 3 16 wheel brackets and the way that I settled on inch and a half wide was that was the same width as the washers I would be using. And as far as figuring out the hole spacing, all that I did was figure I'm going to replace the washer with the bracket on these two particular nuts. So I spaced the hole about an inch down from the top of the 6 inch strap and the bottom of the 6 inch strap. And as far as figuring out where your pulley needs to be, that's nothing more than preference really and I do have a preference. I prefer to make it as hard as possible for this door to jump off of the railing, especially since kids will be using it. So the technique I use is to figure out the depth of the pulley and make the space between the rail and the top of the door slightly smaller than that. This means the door, in order to be hung on the rail or taken off of the rail, needs to be tipped very far out, which is pretty unlikely to happen during normal use. So once you've figured out the best place to put your pulleys, you can go ahead and drill those holes. Now I did leave the brackets long because I had every intention in the world of cutting a point onto these, which never actually happened. And the last step in the drilling process is just to transfer these wheel bracket holes over to the metal straps. Put a square on it, make sure they're exactly perpendicular and transfer away. Another quick tip that usually pays dividends in the end is to, in an area that's inconspicuous, 
label where each bracket goes, each metal strap goes in accordance to the door. This definitely prevents hole misalignment and confusion down the road. The finish of the metal on this project is going to be just a waxed raw steel. Therefore I'm deburring the back side, but I don't want to grind through the mill scale on the front side. I want to try to keep that patina consistent. Next, the brackets were clamped to the doors in their respective locations and used as a template to drill the holes through the wood. It's very useful to drill the last little bit very slowly so you don't splinter out the wood too badly. I am using wide-headed carriage bolts, so it does give me a little bit of wiggle room. But as with everything, it definitely pays to be careful. Now these are the four brand new lawnmower idler pulleys and they came coated with zinc. Muriatic acid is very useful in removing this coating as long as you're not standing right over the project breathing in the fumes. The subsequent gases are most certainly powerful enough to take your breath away. This step definitely requires the proper safety precautions as well as gear. Once the acid has had enough time to eat through the coatings, you can neutralize and rinse. After that, I sprayed mine down with a light coat of oil and added a couple of drops onto the bearings. This was just to counteract any potential corrosion that may have happened by any acid or water that intruded. I let everything soak overnight and then the next morning wiped it all down. Now this left me with a nice dull gray patina that matched the other metal very well. Once everything was done, I fitted it up for a quick mock-up just to confirm that everything was going to fit correctly. And it looks like we're on the right track, pun intended. Now when it comes to drilling the holes in the rail, the best piece of advice I can give you is to try to figure out where the studs are in your wall and line the holes up accordingly. Now this was a custom application, so I added a whole bunch of blocking behind my wall coverings. The second thing I do is I always place my bolts below the center line. Therefore I run no risk of the pulleys interfering with the legs that attach the rail to the wall. And speaking of attaching the rail to the wall, how do you figure out how long to cut your spacers? Well, the most reliable method that I've found is simply to mock all the pieces together and pull a measurement to the back side of the door. Now, chances are your rail is going to be crossing from a door frame onto a wall. Therefore, you'll have to add three quarters of an inch. Or if your door casing is custom, whatever the thickness of it is. One thing I did do in this particular instance is add a square washer to the back side of the spacer simply to distribute the pressure more evenly. And the last thing you might notice here is that I added a square nut in here on the last leg to prevent the door from rolling off of the end of the rail. The next step is one that I very much enjoy. It's a process that I employ in my shop often, and it's actually the exact same way that I treat my welding tabletop. Using my large propane torch, I heat the metal up to a range between 130 to 140 degrees. I then take a clean rag and some regular furniture paste wax and wipe all the metal down. This puts on a nice protective coating, as well as gives the metal an attractive gray color. The fumes smell really good. All of these flat metal pieces get the exact same treatment and it ended up matching the pulley wheels and the hardware very, very nicely. And while I had the torch out, I went ahead and accentuated all the wood grain on these old doors with it. This is a really cool old technique and I actually have a video on how to do it. I'll go ahead and put a link up to it. It works really, really well with older wood that has a very defined wood grain, but it is possible to do it with new wood also. And once I was satisfied, I moved on to the next step, which is some wood stain. For this, I'll be using weathered oak. I've done a bunch of projects with it and I really like the color. Now this step is pretty straightforward, no unusual techniques, just be sure to properly dispose of your rags when you're all done. And from there I met with Mrs. United States of Build, had her sign off on the color, 
and secured permission to continue with the project. And that brings us to the hardware. Now I had several different types of hardware all in various stages of life. Some looked to be pretty old, some of it was not that old, and some of it was brand new stock. Some of it was zinc coated, some of it was rust coated, and as you can see here, some of it was galvanized. But this did present me with a small challenge. I had to bring it all into the same color spectrum and have it somewhat match with the other metal on the project. For removing the coatings, I turned to the muriatic acid again. And once the protective coatings were removed from everything, I took all of the hardware, put it into a big pile, gathered up some different size metal shavings and metal chips from some of my shop tools, then combined and dumped the entire mess into my concrete mixer. I then let the combination noisily bang around and spin for about 30 minutes. Before I pulled the mixture out of the barrel, I added a tiny amount of oil just to coat everything very well. Once everything looked adequate, I turned it off, collected it all, dumped it out and began sorting through it and cleaning it. This was all a step that I had to do out of necessity. Because all the hardware I got was different patinas and not uniform, I had to do something to make it all match. Now depending on what hardware you decide to use, this might be completely unnecessary. But if you do decide to age your hardware, muriatic acid is always a good option as long as proper safety is employed. But there is a plethora of other techniques available also if you just do a little bit of searching. It's largely dependent on preference and skill level as well as the tools you have available to you. And here is what our finished product looks like. A nice uniform gray that began life as rust, zinc, and or galvanized coating. We've arrived at our second to last step, assembly. I did have a little helper for this step and it went very smoothly, mainly because everything was labeled and kept track of throughout the entire process. Now before I brought this all the way out to the cabin, I wanted to mock it up in the shop to be sure that it was all going to work out. And lo and behold, it did. Now you can see by carefully measuring, paying really close attention to all your measurements and your spacing and everything, that it's really no problem to get a nice tight fit up and a level hanging door. Now you can see there is a little bit of a gap here. That's purely because the center of the rail here is unsupported. Once it's supported, it won't have that sag in it, and it'll tighten right up. Now the other thing I think that really frustrates people with these barn door kits is when the door does not hang level. And really a door that doesn't hang level comes down to where your pulley is spaced in relation to the center line of your door. Now if you just take the time to tune that by spacing washers in here, or spacing washers in on your mounting hardware, you can really fine tune where the bottom of that door hangs. Now these things hang perfectly level because I lined my wheel center line down the center of my door. And that pretty well concludes this project. As always, thanks a million for watching. I do appreciate every view that I get. If you feel so inclined, go ahead and leave some feedback down below and check back frequently. Hopefully we see you on the next one.